internet it's Dustin again with my HomeKit Home continuing on with our series on HomeKit automations this week looking at automations based on when a sensor detects something these are by far my favorite HomeKit automations and if you couldn't tell I'm pretty excited about this video so enough of me rambling let's get into it here we are on the automations tab in Apple's home app and we'll tap the plus button at the top right and we'll select the very last option there a sensor detect something and here we have a few different sensors we have a motion sensor we have a leak sensor a contact door and window sensor as they're called so let's have a look at how these work first we'll have a look at motion sensors so we can see that our condition here is for detecting motion and stops detecting motion looking at the contact sensor now now one thing i do briefly want to mention is that as you can see we can only choose one sensor detecting something at a time in apple's home app however with third-party apps we can use multiple different sensor conditions if we go down to the bottom there, we can see that we have the contact sensor open or that it is closed. Those are our two options for that particular sensor condition. Now let's look at the leak sensor. So here we only have the one option for detecting a leak, which I guess kind of makes sense. So we can also choose the time condition for any of these. All of these are the same. So we can look at at night, during the day. We can also adjust that in 15 minute increments up to one hour before or after sunrise or sunset. Or alternatively, we can also choose a specific time of day. So here's what we'll do. Let's go ahead and set up an actual automation instead of just kind of going through things. So what we'll do is I want this leak detector to turn some lights blue whenever it detects a leak. I want this to happen at any time. I don't really care if it's at night or during the day, but I do want it to be when somebody's home because if nobody's home, then it doesn't really matter. So here we can choose our actions. We can choose one or more scenes as we can see, or one or more accessories, or any combination of those things. So since I didn't really set up a scene for this automation, let's go ahead and select all of the different bulbs that I want to include in this automation, which are all of the color bulbs and strips that I have scattered about the house. So I'll go ahead and select those. So we've gotten all of those lights selected. We'll tap next at the top right. So now we need to go ahead and adjust the actions of those. I do want them at full brightness and all blue. So let's go ahead and do that. And while we go through all this, if you have any sort of sensor based automations that you'd like to use, let us know in the comments down below. While you're at it, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. You can also hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of our new videos whenever they release. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. So we can also test our automation if we would like, although it's only going to test the actions, not the actual conditions themselves since the conditions haven't been met. Also, we can decide if we want to turn off any actions that were turned on during the scene from one, two, three, four, five minutes, and then in five minute increments up to one hour after the automation has been triggered. So we'll tap done at the top right. It gets sent to the cloud. And just like that, presto, boom, bang, bing, we are good to go. So we'll tap on the actual automation down there at the bottom, and we'll see what we can do with that. We can enable and disable the automation if we'd like. If we tap below when, we can adjust the conditions of our automation, just like so. I'm pretty happy with how all of that looks there. We can also adjust any of the particulars of the actions here, but I'm pretty happy with that. And we can test the automation. We can also select different scenes or accessories if maybe we forgot something there. I thought I had forgotten a bulb here, but I don't think I did. Um, I don't think so. Nope. I think we're good to go there. Once we're happy with all of our adjustments, we'll go ahead and tap a done or cancel at the top there. And again, we can adjust our turn off time if we want any of those things to turn off. And we can also delete the automation if we'd like. And we can do it there, we get our confirmation, or we can swipe left and delete it there. However, as usual, be careful because there is no confirmation. 
These automations really are where the home kit magic really starts to happen. You know, we always talk about the smart home and everybody wants to use their their assistant, right? They want to use Siri and tell Siri to do different things. However, that's not really my style. I want things to happen in the background and automations based on when a sensor detects something really make that happen. Now, as we saw from the video, there are a few different types of sensors that are supported in HomeKit. We have contact sensors, motion sensors, we have temperature and humidity sensors, although with Apple's Home app at this time, we can't really do anything with temperature and humidity, but we can do that with third-party apps, and we do have a couple of videos that we will link to in the description box below where you can see how to do that. So, how do you use these automations? We'd really love to hear from you down in the comments below. We'd also appreciate it if you subscribe and hit that bell notification if you want to be notified whenever we release a new video. Down there in the description box, you can find links to all of our social media and our blog over at myhomekithome.com. Well, that's all for today. Until next time, this has been Dustin from My Home Kit Home.